Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Yolanda Spivey with Your Black Women, a division of Your Black World. And today I have two special guests with me. I have Kathy Henry, and her website is The Potty Mouth Granny. And I also have Simone Blakely with me, and her website is ToraTwoCents.com. And today we are here to discuss a subject that is near and dear to our hearts, and it was in regards to a I guess an article that was on the site I Date Daily by Maria Lloyd. And in this article, it's, um, you know, Shonda Rhimes, who is the creator of Scandal, um, How to Get Away with Murder, a whole host of other things. She sat down with Oprah and she gave an interview on Super Soul Sunday. And in the interview, Shonda was saying that she did not have a desire to get married. And we three had like a girl fight on my post, basically, <laughs> because we had a, like a differences of opinion about the whole matter. Kathy, you and I sided together a little bit, but Simone, your opinion was way left. But I liked it. I liked it and I respect it. And that's why I wanted to, you know, do this little video chat together so that we can air it out and talk about this. So ladies, exactly. Yes. So, okay, so let me just quote a little bit of what Shonda Rhimes told Oprah. She said, I don't want to get married at all. The desire to want to be married is like the desire to have children. And when you don't want it, people ask, what is wrong with you? I don't want a husband in my house. And she also proceeded to say that she never fantasized about marriage. And Oprah went in and she also said that she wouldn't have the life that she had had she gotten married. So, ladies, I will start with, let's start with Simone. Let's start with Simone okay. because your opinions were like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. So let's start with you. What do you think about that? Uh, based upon what you just said, I have no issue at all whatsoever um i with women saying that they should not get married well they don't want to get married they don't have the desire to get married mm -hmm. i also don't have an issue when women say they don't have the desire to, to have kids because our value is not built upon whether we're attached to a man our value is not built upon whether we're able to bear children i there are wonderful women out here that are nurturing that are awesome in society that cannot biologically have children there are women out here that are like, hey, I don't want to get married. Um, the only issue that I have uh, is when people want to reproduce and say, I don't want to get married. That's all. That's my whole issue. That's all. Okay. 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 And Kathy, what was your opinion? My whole issue is that people were acting like she had did something to them personally by stating that she didn't want to get married. Like it was somehow a front to the black community that she doesn't want to get married. She doesn't owe us anything. She doesn't have to get married. You know, and I was reading a lot of stuff other than the article I did last read was on different posts. And people were just cutting this woman up. And I mean, they don't even like it in the first place. So why is you upset about her not getting married? You didn't want to. It. it didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> You know, you're so bad. This woman who don't know you exist. Exactly. You, you want to get married. Yes. It didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> A lot of people feel that her actions, the you know, Oprah's actions, her actions is sort of like tearing down the black community. And I kind of wanted to ask you ladies, what do you think about that? The black community got a lot of issues that don't have anything to do with Shonda Rhimes. They existed long before she came into being. Mm -hmm. And us getting married to me is not going to solve anything. We have a lot of economic problems. That's why a lot of people don't want to get married because of money. You know, exactly. a lot of men don't want to get married because they they can't do the traditional husband thing these days. It's hard. You need two incomes, sometimes three or four. <laughs> with both parties both working to bring in income. So People are not looking at marriage like they used to back in the day. So we can't use that same paradigm. You know, like you get married, you had the kids, you know. I think we need something new. What about you, Simone? Uh, 
as I said before, I totally, <laughs> if you're looking to have children, if you're looking to reproduce, I think that you should be looking for marriage. Um, uh, uh, to, to, break, to piggyback off of what Kathy was saying about the economics issue, one of the huge reasons why we do have an economics issue in our community is because we don't practice uh, a commitment within marriage. And I'm not talking about just legal marriage with a piece of paper because I do know people who are, have said their vows and, and they are committed and they don't have the piece of paper from the government. I don't, you don't necessarily have to have that. Right. But, um, you know, that commitment and that uh, sexual ex- uh, exclusivity and um, in a, in a monogamous, monogamous marriage, that has been linked to cultural prosperity as well as economic prosperity in various different um, studies, scholarly studies that have researched this over, over years, over time. Mm-hmm. And the black community is missing this. You look at all these other cultures that hold uh, marriage to a high standard. Right. These are the cultures that are keeping wealth in a legacy, generational over time, keeping it in one of the family. Us, we're not doing that. And a lot of times, um, you know, like me, I was saying I was a single mom. Uh, I was an exception to the rule. But there are many other people, statistics show that uh, being in my position isn't, isn't um, helping the community. Okay. Okay. Well, in Oprah's, um, in Shonda's position, they are, of course, two powerful women. They can buy us under the bridge, okay? <laughs> they can, I mean, <laughs> they, they need to call a sister, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. <laughs> All right. You're right. I'll buy some insurance from MichaelWhitney.com. So anyway. <laughs> well, they need a writer. Call me. I got storyline. <laughs> For real. So, but, you know, the whole thing is a lot of people, like I said, they thought they were destroying the black community. But also, as it relates to our ever-changing world, you know, women, our roles in the community, our roles in the world has drastically changed over the last 50, 60 years. So, I mean, how do you see, like, the way they are going, do you think it's setting, like, a, a precedent for other women to follow? You think that other women, younger girls, are going to look up to them and say, oh, well, shoot, I don't have to get married either and start having children, you know, by themselves, setting up their own families, especially if they are financially capable of doing so. What do you ladies think? I don't think so. I got a lot of little uh, young women friends up in D.C. that don't have any children and they're not married and they want to get married. They want to get married and have their children in the fantasy of marriage. What they have the problem with is finding a man who wants to get married. Right. <laughs> That's the biggest. Because <laughs> they want to, you know, D.C., you know, they got a, it's a lot of young black professionals that are really doing good and you guys really feel no desire to get married. Yeah. You know, so they want in particular she wants children so bad, but her prospects is kind of, you know, and she's saying if she's about 35, she probably is going to go ahead and have a child without a husband. But she really don't want to do that, but she also wants to be a mother. Exactly. And that's the thing for me. If you want to be a mother, and you, sometimes, you, you know, we only got a little bit of time to have babies. Mm-hmm. If you want to have a biological child of your own, you don't have that long to wait. So you got to, if, if you want to be a mother, a nurturing mother, I think you should go ahead and do it. It would be ideal to have a husband and the children and all that, but sometimes it just it just don't happen. It doesn't happen. And I would hate to see her be my age, which is forty five, just bitter because it's too late. Yeah. And I bet you my and she still haven't found the great guy that she wanted to marry and have children with. Yeah. I mean in Shonda Ron's case, and this is something that Simone um we were try like I was trying to tell you on the post, um, she adopted her daughters. So, Mm -hmm. and you know, there are a lot of, let me tell you, most of the people, most of the kids that are in orphans, or, you know, that are for foster kids, they're black. They are black kids. I I got some horror stories I can tell about in Chicago. I I read a couple of weeks ago that Guardian had kicked out and she didn't have nowhere to go. Yeah. So I can imagine. For money, so she can have a coffee to go wherever she said she was going. Some of that Atlanta, there's so many children like that. And it's not like we're breaking our necks to adopt them. Right, exactly. <laughs> a lot of people have opinions about, you know, what Shonda Rhimes did and all this other good stuff. And, and that's fine because she publicly stated this, um, you know, this affirmation. And so 
we can publicly critique it. It's our, you know, it's right. our business to critique it. But, exactly. but I'm like, I think she did a, a, a very honorable thing by adopting her daughters. I, I even want to adopt. I think by, like when I, you know, get well into my forties and I'm financially able to, I, I'm thinking about adopting a few girls myself. So yes. Yeah, so- yeah, like it, you know, especially. And I'm kind of funny doing the, opening up a group home because I really know I'm kind of my youngest is fourteen, the oldest is twenty eight. I'm not re- ready to redo my life no. <laughs> like that, but I still <laughs> want to help with the the issue though. That's why I want to open exactly. up exactly around the way children. Exactly, that's exactly. my plan. Yeah, so I see a lot of people critiquing them, but I think, like I said, she did the honorable thing by adopting her children. So, Simone, what do you think about that? Because I know you said that, you know, when women start planning to have children, I guess I guess procreating, but does it make a difference whether they have the children or whether these, are children, whether these children are adopted or not? Does it make a difference? They're still going into a home that is um, a single-parent home. Well, this is what I would say. I would like to um, address a few things um, to address the thing, what you just said about Mm -hmm. um, adopting. She only adopted two children. The third child she actually brought forth into this world. Oh, she She did? Yes, she had a surrogate, and she bought the child. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Didn't know. Okay, great, great. So I do think think there is a difference. I, I think there's a difference in saying, especially when we already have all these children in the adoption homes, okay, well, I don't have a husband, and I'm, I'm this age, and I just want to bring forth children into this world so I can feel some type of way, because um, mm-hmm. I, think, I think families should be created more strategically, especially considering our plight, especially considering our economic situation. I don't think we should bring children into this world because of how we feel, you know, our emotions, and I just want somebody to love me, or I, I want to love this person. I think it should be more strategic. Um, and I think that her adopting those children were awesome, were great. Um, I think that she has a, um, um, she has the finances. She does have the finances to take care of the children, yes. but finances isn't isn't the is it. It's one aspect of raising stable children, one aspect. Um, yes, we have children taken care of um, financially, but emotionally, psychologically, physio- physiologically, a lot of those things, um, even dealing with people who have money. Um, for instance, me, I was a single mom that escaped mm-hmm. statistics, that had money and was able to provide my son with everything that he needed, but at the same time, he was stressing in his brain, Mama, why aren't you with my father? Or, you know, yeah. why is my dad not around? Yeah. And yeah. that's stress. That, and that, even though he was financially, he was eating, he had shelter, I could not relieve that stress out of his brain. Mama, where's dad? Or why isn't he here? And that was something that's on me. That's on right. me. And that's nothing that I can pay for with money to snatch those thoughts or snatch the stress out of his brain that his right. father isn't living in the home with his mom. Right. And most of my friends are married with children um and at that time i'm married now but at the time i wasn't and he's like you're you know you're different why is everybody else having a mom and a dad and 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 spending time with one another and that hurts it does and i would also like to say that all um a lot of times people associate roles with women like you know the cooking and the cleaning and the staying at home um and I actually teach a class about femininity and femininity. You're you're a woman regardless regardless of whether you cook, regardless of whether you clean. Exactly. Any of those things that society exactly. tells you that you're supposed to do, but mm-hmm. what? But we are born biologically with things that are different than men. Like for instance, studies have shown that children who have been in the home they develop motor skills faster. They're able to. Um, they uh, studies show that they think cr- more critically. Um, because of certain things that the dad has going on in his brain and how he operates versus how the mom is. So mm-hmm. even if I have the money, we have the dad over here with the psychological aspect and the physiological aspect that, that I don't really have because we're biologically different, whether I cook or not. Right. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I'm also, I'm not a single mom per se. I'm a single woman, but, you know, my child's father is very heavily involved in my child's life, and I'm fortunate for that you know a lot of women don't have that so 
but but still, you know, I understand where what you're saying, Simone, and I and I agree with that. I agree with that. I have seen where children, you know, didn't have their dads in a home, and they did, you know, they do ask, Mom, where's Daddy? You know, why isn't he here? You know, and they start to, you know, feel unloved and a whole plethora of other things. So I totally agree with your remarks. And there is something that men can give to our children that we just basically biologically psychologically, even physically cannot give. So that's another thing. Okay. What do you think, Kathy? Miss Feminista. I would uh, hope that. <laughs> I believe you can have, I believe in the concept of the village where all parties are involved with raising the children and although you might not, the father, like, so what happens when, if like if you are married and you have children and the father dies? What do you do then? You have to surround your children by able-bodied men, men, not boys, That's that right. can be like a father figure to your child in the case something happens to the father. I just don't really think, I think marriage is kind of half bad. That's just me. <laughs> you know, it's a wonderful thing if you meet that one person you want to get married, but I don't think women should be made to feel less than or unwomanly because you don't want to get married or you haven't gotten married. Right. And you still have that desire for children. Because, you know, that's, you know, instinctive, you know, for some women, not all. Because there's women out here who had children that should have never, ever had a child mm -hmm. by nobody. <laughs> that's another conversation that we should have. <laughs> exactly. Hmm. Ooh, Lord. Ooh, Lord. Yes. Don't get started. Okay. <laughs> but you I do want to say. If, mm -hmm. if your child, if you are a single mother, and the father's not around, you need to surround your children by men that can help you with the visit. Like I said, nurture your child. That's, That's right. Any dude. Uncles, grandfathers, and I was thinking the case of Shonda Rush, she was raised in a two-family home, a two-family home. Mm -hmm. That was middle, upper middle class. Both, I think, it, one, it, either both or one of her, uh, both of them, her parents are uh, educators. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure her daughters are not going to be feeling less than. Maybe right. a little when it's you know, the whole concept of daddy, because they're like, where's my daddy? But I'm sure they're going to feel love, though. Because I know yeah. children in two-parent homes, they don't get no love at all. Because yes. they're dysfunctional. That's true. <laughs> that is true. I know um, I thoroughly enjoyed Shonda Rhimes' interview with Oprah. And I tell you, my concept of marriage growing up was, I guess I would say it was forced upon me because of what I was looking at. I grew up in a, a tight religious circle and it, you weren't, like in this religion, you were nothing unless you were married, okay? Right. Like marriage was like the end all be all. By the time you 18, you had to start searching for a man. And I felt, you know, at, you know, when I was young, pressure, you know, to get married. And as I got older, you know, I know it never happened for me. It, it could have happened. I could have walked down the aisle probably two times in my life. But, you know, my decision was not to go there. And I'm in a way, right now, I'm happy I didn't. Um, but I do know that marriage and, a, and the concept of mar marriage was forced on me, the thought. And, I'm, and I, like, I, I found Shonda Rhimes' interview refreshing because she's – she feel that she is whole without marriage. That's her truth. And that's something that we were talking about on the thread, is if you are living your truth, and Simone, I'm going to get you because you were talking about all kinds of stuff. She was talking about all kinds of beans and burritos, but we'll discuss that. But if you're living your truth, and your truth is that you feel whole being a single woman with your children, then that's your truth, and that's something that you have to live with. And that's something that you have to, you know, when your kids start asking questions, that's something that you have to deal with. Um, yeah, so any final words, ladies? Well, I was engaged twice to the same guy. This mm -hmm. was my daughter's father. Mm -hmm. And we broke up. And when I look back in retrospect, we it's good that we did get married because we exactly. changed so drastically doing from the first time when we were engaged, that was in 93, and the last time was in 99. And mm -hmm. if we both changed so much as a as people since those years, that we won't be divorced right now. If, we, if exactly. I got married to him in 93, if I got married to him in 99, we will be divorced right now. And yeah. I'm looking around because my cat acting real crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's your Diddy cat name, P. Diddy? <laughs> your cat name is P. Diddy or something like that, right? Diddy. 
Big, yeah, crazy I'm ass cat. Right <laughs> so Simone, Booby, what do you think? Um, like I said before, I don't see anything wrong with someone saying that they shouldn't, they don't want to get married. Um, Shonda kind of wants to have her cake and eat it too. She's like, I don't want to get married, but I don't want to put forth the step. I want to date. I want to have sex. I want to cuddle. I want to, you know, have, you know, I want to go out and, and, and do these things with men and have men around me, but I don't want the commitment. I don't want to have that commitment. And to me, personally, if, if that's what you want, you're actually, I think that's a, that's a selfishness um, because you're saying, okay, I want all this right here. I want the companionship of a man, but I don't want the self-sacrifice. Right. I don't want the, um, you know, because me being married and coming from and coming from being a single mom, oh my gosh, such a sacrifice, such a change. I was ahead of my household. Now I have to consider my husband. Now I have to um, sacrifice, and I and have to be like, I don't oh my get, god, that's I don't want to give. That's why I don't want to get married. <laughs> right. It's like, I don't that's want to sacrifice at the same time. Right at the same time, I've made this commitment. I right. want to create a legacy with my husband. I right. want to create all these beautiful brown babies with my husband. And I want to make sure that they're fi- financially equipped, mentally right. equipped, emotionally equipped. So there are some sacrifices I have to make. And I feel like when people look at marriage, they look at it as just a legal contract and it's no, government. It's much it's more than that. Up. It's much more than that. You have it to give so, so much. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand the impact that it has on children when mm-hmm. they're not only are they able to see you co-parent, but they're able to see their mom and dad sacrifice and um, die to self to one another to make it work. I'm not saying dealing with abuse or dealing with cheating, right. I'm talking about when you, when you are feeling like, okay, well, I don't want to do some simple thing. Like, for instance, my husband, like, I used to get upset with my husband for putting pans into the dishwasher that I spent a lot of money on. Those are my pans. I don't want you spending, putting them in the dishwasher, destroying them. <laughs> but he wasn't stopping anytime soon. So, therefore, I had to look at myself and say, come on, is this a one or a ten? Is this going to destroy your marriage? Well, then I need to stop complaining about it and just focus on the tens and leave the threes alone. If he's oh, going to yeah. keep putting those dishes in the, in the thing, oh, well, whatever. We're, we're gonna, you just going to have to take them out. And keep like, take them out, exactly. And keep it moving. I have to sacrifice. But I know people who are like, honey, you put them pans in a dishwasher? You better tell them by yourself. Yeah. I'm, and I'm not with that. I'm willing to sacrifice. Right. I hear that. And it is a lot of sacrifice. But I guess women like Oprah and Shonda, they don't want that sacrifice. They want to live their life as free as a bird. You know, they don't want to compromise. And that's what Oprah said. She said, you know, I wouldn't have the life that I've I've created had I gotten married. And I do, in a way, she's correct because there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into marriage, you know. I'm pretty sure that you know, she'll probably just still be doing her sitcom. She wouldn't have her studio and her own channel, you know, if she right. got exactly. married, you know. So, all right, lady, tell us where we can find you and tell us of any projects you guys are working on. Let us know. <laughs> I'm about to work on my thesis. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, Congratulations. Masters. Go ahead, boo. So proud of you. I think I'm gonna do it on the, like I said, the abnormal psychology of the, the social media because it's a real nutcase. Girl, <laughs> you ain't never. Every lie. day I'm so happily amazed. Yes, yes, yes. What about you, Simone? Um, well, you can find me everywhere at Torsense, YouTube, Facebook. I'm on Periscope. I live stream almost every evening these days, except currently because I'm launching my four, first course. It's called um, Foundations of Femininity, and um, I pretty much talk about some of these very same things that we talk about here. How, and it comes from, a, um, you know, I'm a believer. I believe in Christ, and it comes from that background. But how the how the church has uh, said, oh well, you're not a woman unless you get married or have kids. Yeah, and, religion. And yeah. You hold these 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 roles. That doesn't make you a woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, um, I have an upcoming class about that. And if you want to check out some of my material for free, you can go to FeminineKeys.com and okay. download a free mini manual to kind of read where I'm coming from and kind of okay. understand my background. Oh, I'm going to do that in the morning. 
<laughs> yes, I'm going to do that too as well. And maybe we can invite you back on the show, Simone, so you can talk about that. And um, I just want to thank you, ladies, for you know joining me tonight. My name is Yolanda Spivey. Um, please look me up if you guys need some insurance. I got to give my shameless plug, y'all. M. Whitney okay, and no Hall, <laughs> Michael Whitney and Associates. <laughs> Please look me up if you guys are in need for insurance, but you also can look me up. I'm a writer for Your Black World and okay. also part of the Your Black Women circle. So, again, okay. thank you, ladies. I love you both, and we love shall be too. talking soon. Love you, too. Yes, we yes. will. Yes, sister. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, y'all.